Towards the end of part two, we took a closer look at the content of the Aseret Hadibrot, and based upon a statement recorded in Masechet Makot, the ten utterances were divided into two sets. In one, the first two of the Dibrot, and the remaining eight comprising the second set. The difference between the two sets, it was suggested, lay in the fact that each of the eight Dibrot involved a commitment on the part of the recipient, either in the form of a mitzvat aseh or a mitzvat lota aseh. And these eight were prototypes for 611 of the Tariag 613 mitzvot. And because they involve action, the transmission of those mitzvot, the original eight, expanded into the set of 611, came from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Moshe, and it was Moshe who actually provided the Bnei Israel with the details and specifics of the various mitzvot. Conversely, the first two of the Aseret HaDibrot involved belief, and belief generally is an activity that is Lamala Mitam Vedat, cannot be quantified, and comes as a matana to those individuals committed to the concept of monotheism. And for this reason, the first two of the Aseret HaDibrot bypassed Moshe Rabbeinu and were communicated to the Bnei Israel directly from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As noted, this was a position tendered by Rav Hamnona, who interprets the statement in Devarim 33.4, Torah Tziva Lano Moshe. Torah is a gematria of 611, and those 611 commandments were communicated from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Bnei Israel via the process of Tziva Lano Moshe. Whereas Anochi Velo Yehilecha, the first two of the Aseret Hadibrot, Mipi HaGvura Shemanum, were heard from Kaviyachol, the mouth of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In the world of Drush, the use of gematria to demonstrate a particular point is quite valid. However, from the standpoint of the Pshuta Shalmikra, as a general rule, one does not find the Parshanim utilizing gematria as a tool for the understanding of the text. Ramban reaches the same conclusion to that expressed in the Gemara Makot through careful analysis of the actual wording of the Aseres Dibrot. There is a very stark change that takes place in the text, and that is the change from first person, I, we, to third person, he, she, they. In Shemot 20, the terminology is Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I, Asher Hotzeiticha, who extricated you, Me'eretz Mitzrayim. Similarly, you are not to have any Elohim Acherim Al Panai before me in my presence. But then, with the third of the Aseret Dibrot in Pasuk Zion, the command reads, Lo tisat shem Hashem elokecha lashav. You shall not carry the name of Hashem your God, third person. In other words, Moshe speaking about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, lashav, in vain. Similarly, Ki lo yinake Hashem, God will not hold unaccountable, et asher yise et shmo lashav, anyone who carries his name, third person, in vain. The fourth of the Yaseret Hadibrot, Shabbat, Yom Hashvi, Shabbat, not to me, but Lashem Elokecha. And the reason expressed in Pasuk Yud Aleph, because in six days, Asa Hashem, Hashem, made the heavens and the earth, third person. Al came Berech Hashem, at Yom HaShabbat, Vayikad Sheihu, He, Hashem, blessed. He, Hashem, sanctified it, the day of Shabbat. And finally, the fifth of the Aseret Hadibrot, the mitzvah of Kibbut Avaim. The reason given is that God shall lengthen your days, Allah Adama, upon the earth, Asher Hashem Elokecha Notein Lach, that Hashem, third person, is giving you. The conclusion that the Ramban reaches for the switch between first person and third person is that the first two of the Aseret Hadibrot are framed in the first person because they came to the Bnei Israel directly from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu speaking directly to the nation. But it seems after the first of the two Dibrot, the nation felt that such an exposure to the direct Kedusha of HaKadosh Baruch Hu might lead to their untimely death where the neshama would strive to leave the body. And therefore, we are told in Pasuk 16, that the nation came to Moshe and requested that Daber Ata Imano Venishma, you be the one who communicates the Dibrat from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to us, Ve'ali Daber Imano Elokim, rather than hearing the commandments directly from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because we are concerned, Pen Namut. Although recorded following the last of the Aseret Hadibrot, Rambam would read Pasuk 16 as having taken place after the second commandment. 
As a result of their request, the remaining eight commandments went from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Moshe Rabbeinu and from Moshe Rabbeinu to the nation. There is one anomaly with this line of thinking, and that is the opening statement to the Aseret HaDibrot that suggests that all ten of the Dibrot were communicated directly to the nation from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, all of the Dibrot, not just the first two, were transmitted directly to the nation from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The response that the Ramban provides to this anomaly is that the first two of the Dibrot, the nation heard the actual voice of Hashem, and they also understood what it was that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was communicating to them. At the end of the second commandment, they approached Moshe with a request that they feared that they would die were this to continue in this format, and therefore plan B was activated, in which they heard the sound of each of the remaining eight Dibrot, were not able to interpret the meaning of the specific Dibrot, which was left to Moshe to clarify the details. In this way, the Ramban justified the opening statement that God communicated all of the Dibrot to the nation, while at the same time, he can justify the switch from first person to third person for the remaining eight Dibrot. Two questions are raised by the Rebbe regarding the Ramban's approach. Question one, if as the Ramban argues that the eight final Dibrot, the nation did not understand what they were hearing, they merely heard the voice of HaKadosh Baruch, then one can ask, what was the point of HaKadosh Baruch Hu actually communicating with the nation information that they did not understand, merely hearing the voice, the rumblings of that command? And secondly, what difference is there, if any, aside from the fact of the form that the transmission took place, between the first two of the Dibrot, where the nation heard and understood, and the remaining eight, in which the nation merely heard the call, the voice of HaKadosh Baruch, as he commanded the Dibrot to the nation.